Okay. I need to tweet about my stream and then get started. So let's make this happen. Kittens here. Awesome. Yeah, I haven't announced it yet, which is why it's uh, probably a little quiet getting started, but I'm running late today. We're going to make this happen, though. So I got a photo. I'm going to put this on Instagram and Twitter and let everyone know that we're getting started. Okay, Char is here, too. Awesome. I'm glad you guys just know. <laughs> That's not pretty. Oh, that's probably fine. I like worry too much about if my Instagrams are pretty or not. Oh no, what's that? Oh, is that my own window playing my audio back to me? <laughs> That's not good. Let me close that out. Okay, and then I need some music going. That's why it's so quiet in here. Sorry, guys. Let me get some music going, and then we will uh, let it all let it all get started. Fire Emblem commercials. That's appropriate. They must be getting the right tag. <laughs> they know I'm working on Celica, so they're like, let's try to sell some Fire Emblem to these people. And here's my streaming playlist. Picking up right back where we left off. Oh yay, Pastel Galaxy says they're joining from uh, YouTube, watching mostly the older, or the, uh, the archive streams. Let me move my microphone closer over here too.
Huh. Okay, I'm still getting audio now. You guys are only hearing the music. Okay, let me double check that. Because that was working when I started, right? Oh, it is working now. Okay, good. Awesome. I don't know what happened. Maybe it was just uh, cutting out or something like that. Okay, great. Awesome. Sorry about that, guys. A little bit of a rocky start today, but I'm feeling good, so we're gonna make this a good work stream. So I did a little bit of work off screen, which was pretty much to just copy these patterns and get a little bit started with the tooling. I did one of them, um, but but like the designs that are all on these like round knobby things on the end, I went ahead and cut that last night just so that I could get some progress going. And as you saw, I had my snaps that were just placed inside there as placeholders that are a part of the design that I'm gonna incorporate. Because if you can see on the side here, she's got these like little ball things that are the, the point of contact between the shoulders and the rest of the, the armor. So yeah, uh, basically I just cut one of them already and I'm gonna cut the other three or tool the other three during today's stream. So I need to rearrange my stuff a little bit. And here we go with the stone slab and my tools. Music, okay. Is music also good now? Let me know how the audio levels are, but um, we, should be, we should be good to go if you guys can hear me fine. Okay, and I also need some coffee because obviously. <laughs> All right, hopefully that'll get us ready to work. So yes, my bevel, not my bevels, my bevels need to happen now. My uh, swivel knife cutting already happened last night. So if you are not familiar with that and you wanna know more about it, you can check out our previous stream. But basically, I have scored the leather with a swiveling knife, and that's going to allow me to create these deeper impressions that will give the um, the surface different levels and bevels and uh, texture and things like that. So I'm just going to apply some water. I went ahead and cut these um, holes for the snaps, just to the placement for them. And that's something I want to do to the other pieces too, is to make sure all of the uh, holes are cut because they were going to help me during the painting. Oh yes, Tiny Anvil is back out. Let me adjust this a little bit. Oh, and I ordered some curtains. I'm sure you'll be happy to hear. I ordered some curtains to put behind me so that I don't have like light coming in through the window. As pretty as my white curtains are, they're just not cutting it. Um, so yeah, next stream. They should arrive today, actually. Just not in time for this. So I have this beveling tool and I am taking it along the edge of the cut that I made earlier. I'm gonna apply a little bit more water because this hide is kind of dry. It hasn't been worked on today. Sergeant Panda asking if I have a tiny hammer to go with a tiny anvil. I do not, actually. That would be pretty cute, though. It would have to be a really dense, like, made out of a heavy material to be a very effective tiny hammer, though. Uh, yeah, this little tool stand I got as part of one of the kits I ordered. Like, I didn't have to purchase it separately, um, but a lot of people make their own tool stands. You can get some really cool, like, handmade designs on places like Etsy. So I don't have too many tools right now, but as I expand, I'm going to have to get something a little bit bigger. <laughs> Fist and Liz says, the light of Ellen Deal is just shining behind me constantly. That's a lovely way to think of it. That's right. I'm just glowing and like a fairy or an elf rather. Okay, cool. Very dense, tiny hammer. Yeah, if that exists, maybe I'll look into it. So 
So I'm just moving this beveling tool along the cut edge. Maybe I need to use more force because I feel like this isn't giving me as deep of a bevel as I got last night, but we're going to texturize it after I use this tool so it will get plenty, um, plenty compressed, let's say. They're almost overshot right there. I think my cut is just kind of shallow. That might be the issue. So I went ahead and put down the bevel on it, and now I need these tools that I set aside last night. Oh, I've got an exacto knife here. It doesn't even have its cap on. That's not good. So I should have two of these. I'm gradually making a mess again in my craft room. Here's the other one that I'm looking for. So these are my two texture stamps. They have different shapes, and the shape of them is going to allow us to get into various nooks and, cr and crannies. Um, one interesting thing about leather tools that wasn't obvious to me when I started that um, could maybe be a tip to help you guys out is that a lot of them are not really designed to be like fully upright and impressed the entire design onto the leather at once. Certain stamps are, yes, but a lot of them, like the, the texture pads or the beveling tools or um, just like various like... Uh, shapes that can be combined to make other designs they're not really uh, intended to be used to create like a solid impression um, the way that they are intended to be used is to be tilted and used um, in a way so that only part of the stamp is making contact with the leather at a time and that obviously varies from stamp to stamp and you can also use them however you want to so if you decide that you want to get like the entire full outline an Im full impression of a stamp, you know, you can do that. But a lot of them are most beautiful when they're incorporated together in a way that kind of blends into each other. And you can accomplish that by uh, tilting your stamps and not having the entire surface of the stamp make contact with the surface of the leather. And that's what I'm doing right now. Although, actually the interior of this I'm gonna have fully texturized. So I don't need to blend this out. I'm just kind of, doing it that way to uh, reinforce these beveling beveling marks, I guess you'd call it. I don't always know the correct terminology for leather because, you know, I have some formal training but not a lot, and so a lot of it I'm just like figuring out as I go or watching various other tutorials on the internet too. Um, so I don't always call everything by the right name, but I'm learning, I'm getting there. Maybe you guys can correct me if you know. Someone says the holes look like a tiny face. I thought they looked like buttons, more or less, because they have like the border outline and then, but it's only three instead of four or two. I mean, I guess buttons can only have three holes. I just don't, you don't usually see them designed that way. Um. Char calling me out on drunk crafting last night. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with that. I was drinking and also down here sewing because that's what I want to do with my time when I'm drinking on a Friday night. And I was working on a shirt that's just like a, some, a, something I'm designing that I'm working on for myself. It is not a costume, it is not related to anything um, work related. I'm just making it for fun. So I haven't really shown the whole thing of what that looks like. Maybe I will soon but I want to I want to see what I can do with it first and see kind of how it evolves because I don't have I don't have a really set plan <laughs> I like to just design freeform and like work with the materials that I have and see where they lead me so to speak Um, screen name taken is asking, after you tap tap a stamp on some leather, can the imprint leave after using the leather? I mean, after bending it or doing something with it. Um, imprints can become lightened. 
like if you were using it from the back, you'll lose a little bit of detail in your in, like your impressions in the front. I saw another leather worker make a post about how they had um, done tooling in the surface of the leather and then flipped it over and then did some embossing by like pressing uh, from the back and that doing so, compressing from both the front and the back kind of, um, they lost a little bit of detail of the tooling in the front. And so in that sense you can, like the design can be lightened by over like use and or from applying pressure from the other side, but it's never gonna like completely disappear or make it go back to being the way it was when you started. So it is, this is sort of a permanent process. You can adjust it and you can kind of undo or, or you can try to redo more work over the same spot, but it's not gonna be like undoing the work. Evening Art is asking, how much have I done on the costume? Well, let's see, we've got um, almost the entire breastplate assembled. I have the front and the back that are ready to go. I have the shoulder pieces that just need this amount of tooling left on them. And I have the shoe pieces that are entirely ready to be painted. So those are the big things. And the headband is completely done. And the wig is mostly done. It is, it is more styling, but the, like, the hair is all sewn into it, which was the time consuming part. Um, so I have not started on the dress itself, but I think this is going to be, well, there's two ways I could go with it. Maybe I should do a poll for you guys. Um, this is going to be my last tooling stream on this particular project. Like, um, other than this, I'm going to move on. Like next time I'm going to move on to another piece of the costume and I can go two ways. I can either do a sewing stream where I start working on the dress and start talking about different sewing techniques and how I'm gonna approach it, or, partic or like maybe a patterning for the, the dress itself, or I could work on the greaves and then finish up all of the leather working for the whole project and um, move on to sewing after that. So those are my two options, and I'm definitely looking for feedback on that. So if you have a preference, if you'd rather see me sew first and then do um, more leather tooling after, then let me know. Otherwise, I would like to get started on the dress soon, just so I feel like I have um, kind of some progress going on different parts of the costume. Mm. Yeah, Kitten, if you don't mind, I would love to have a poll of the audience so anyone who's here has an opportunity to vote. So yeah, thank you, that'd be great. So the options are sewing, um, sewing slash patterning, for patterning for sewing, uh, or greaves, leather working on the greaves. And those are my, my two next options. I know that I've been doing almost exclusively leather working streams. And so part of me is like, oh, well, I don't want to surprise people by doing something totally different that they didn't like sign up for or aren't as interested in. But on the other hand, I kind of want to establish that I also do other things. So I could go either way, but both are going to happen. All right. Kitten has set up a straw poll for us. I'm gonna have that open too. Do -do -do. Cool. Umber tonight, yes, these are the shoulder thingies, for lack of a better term. They're not quite pauldrons, they're just sort of a decorative piece. It is also like free flying off of her arms, but you know, shoulder thingies. That kind of encompasses it, right? A lot of the time when you're working on fantasy armor or fantasy costumes in general, like the parts of the outfit don't have proper names because it's so unrealistic that people would not wear that in real life, uh, which is why it gets a little out of hand with cosplay. It's a little difficult to always convey what you're talking about. Well, that 
turned out even nicer than the one I already posted a photo of. So far, sewing has a huge lead. That's really interesting. Armor thingy, says nerdy silly girl. Whatever you want to call it is totally fine. <laughs> All right, so if you guys want to see sewing, then, you know, that's fine. It's fine with me. But yeah, I'll give it the pull some time and see if anybody else has a, a vote to add. Do it soon. Yeah, so I'm tilting this stamp as I'm pressing it down so that it's not getting, um, it's not getting the entire surface of the stamp, it's just kind of fading off into the leather. And that is the look that I'm going for with this. Uh, OMG, OMG, it's me, Jenny, is asking, what parts are leather and what parts are fabric on the finished product? That's a good question. Um, further confusing, my answer is that a lot of the fabric, in, well, the dress that I'm going to be sewing together is going to be made out of leather, but like a different type of leather than this leather. So um, for ease of explanation, I'm just going to refer to that as fabric parts. So um, the dress itself will be sewn, that'll be like the white area that has sort of puff sleeves that are hidden underneath these shoulder thingies. That's all gonna be one garment that is sewn out of garment leather. And um, the bottom, like the bottom decorative panel that has like the red area with all of the little symbols. Oh, I can show you on this. I also have a physical reference all right, right here. So these right here, are going to be another panel of veg tan leather. So this detail will be tooled into the surface, this color will be painted on, the red is gonna be paint. I think the, the um, designs on it are gonna be made out of either brass or tooling or a combination of both. And uh, they're gonna be mounted onto a dress, and this, this part as well is gonna be made the same way. They're gonna be mounted onto the dress itself. The cape is going to be um, leather, garment leather, and then the black parts are going to be black fabric. That has to be fabric. Uh, and that's going to be actual fabric. Um, I do also use that. <laughs> and let's see. So the linings of these are going to be made out of fabric, but almost everything else that is like fabric is actually leather. Also, actually also leather. It's a different type of leather. So all of like the hard parts, which is the breastplate, the headband, some parts of these little, not quite bracers, I don't know what else you would call them though. Um, this little design section here, this section here on the other side, and the greaves and the shoes are all leather, are all like the veg tanned armor leather. So that's what we are planning for that. Uh, ZKLL asking, doesn't it get too hot in all leather armor? It can, yeah. Um, I think this one will breathe pretty well because it is still open. It's not like encasing my body all the way around because that gets really sweltering. But um, yeah, it's, it's not a breathable fabric, obviously. But depending on your environment and where you are, it can, be, it can be totally manageable. Especially if you're going to like Katsukon or a convention that's up north or in, in the winter time. It's nice to have um, some warmer costumes. I'm gonna adjust my light a little bit because I feel like it's not fully on me. Okay, I intensified the forward light. Okay, that is a little bit better. I still need to stay in front of my window to make that will make you actually, my, my face not be in darkness, but we're making improvements. <laughs> yes, Umber tonight is asking, am I hyped for the game? I'm super hyped for the game. That comes out in like, what, a one week? Not even? 
yeah, I'm pretty sure it's this upcoming week. So, looking forward to that. <laughs> oh, you can actually see my backyard right now? That's nice. So there's just some flowers and stuff. Oh, I already did this side. What am I doing? Okay, so that's one whole thing, one whole thing of these done. I do need to get some more snaps before I can put these in. I only have three. And I keep putting them in just to look at it because I like it so much. But here's the other side. And I punched the holes first and then I did the tooling, which compressing the surface of the leather um, actually made the holes just barely smaller and a little bit tighter now that I'm putting the snaps back in. So that's an interesting phenomenon of how that material gets um, moved around when it gets tooled. But there you are. I think that looks pretty great, honestly. I'm very happy with how these are turning out. Oh, and I do need to wet mold these. I didn't even really think about that. These need to be wet molded so that they're not um, flat because they're going to be curved like this. So I can do that today too. Let's go ahead and finish our tooling and then we can do them wet molding, hopefully in the same stream. So next piece, back with a tiny anvil. So Heka says, I was about to make a crop top and sheer pants for Katsukon, but then I remembered that I didn't want to freeze. Yeah, that's an important factor to think about at Katsukon. It's like, if you're going to Dragon Con, you want to wear as little as possible because not only is it super hot in the summer in Atlanta, but on top of that, you're inside with just huge sweltering crowds of sweaty people. And then Katsukon is the exact opposite because you want to wear as much as you can to keep yourself warm in case there's a fire alarm that forces everybody to go outside in costume, which happened the year before last. One of my friends, Ashley, actually, Ashley, who is a mod here in our chat, Ashley had to go outside dressed as Tifa from Final Fantasy VII. I felt really bad. I saw another girl that was dressed as, like, Devil Homura who was freezing and we, like, ran up to her and like formed a circle around her to, to try to prevent her from like freezing in the wind. It was really sad. <laughs> but at least there was an actual fire. I mean, not that, you know, you want there to be a fire, but at the very least it wasn't a false alarm. They had like a, a very minor, I guess, interior fire that was like a kitchen fire or something. It was quickly under control, thankfully, but um, most of the time when a fire alarm goes off at a con, it's just someone like being a dick and like treating it like a prank and it, it gets hugely frustrating. Okay, just checking back in on the chat, making sure I don't miss anything. All right, cool. Like I'm not getting a crisp enough line on that. I'm trying to like rub it with my finger a little bit to get the impressions out. Like I said, you can't like lift them out entirely, but if you apply the right pressure on them, you can kind of um, minimize any sort of miss strokes with the hammer or the the stamps that you're using. I wonder if this needs to be cut a little bit deeper. Because I think the shallow cuts are giving me difficulty of, like, lining it up perfectly. Let me just give this a quick try.
All right, I'm kind of afraid to do too much more of that because if I miss a line, it's gonna be bad. So I'm just gonna keep moving forward. I do really like this song. I think this is one of my favorite jams uh, of DJ Cutman. It's who we are listening to. Well, this is a Baroque remix. Let me make sure which one this is. Remo. Okay, cool. Oh, do I have my... There we go. Recent events. Oh, okay. I think I'm missing... I've been missing my uh, notifications. Are they playing in the stream for you guys? Or are they not set up? Hmm. Okay, um, Art Artem Killox is followed. Mintplosion, awesome. She's one of my friends. Hi, Mintplosion, if you're still here. Has followed ZKLL and OMG SARS and Kitty Grump have all followed recently. I think that um, notifications aren't playing, so I'm gonna look into that. And by look into that, I mean that I'm gonna ask Jared to look into it so that I can keep working. I think some of my streaming stuff just got messed up, and I don't know how, but I need to learn how to fix my own stuff, I guess. McKay Laxix has followed, thank you. And Les Draws. Yeah, for whatever reason, my Twitch alerts are not attached, even though... Jared, help! Help! My alerts aren't going. <laughs> my alerts aren't going. When I look at this um, scene in OBS, there's like a, a highlight there, but there's nothing that's actually playing, and they haven't been, um, like, the notifications haven't been popping up in, in the stream or the sounds or anything like that. All right, I fixed it. What is happening with my stuff? What is, why are these- It's hard to see because of the resolution on this, but this little eyeball had a line through it showing that it was uh, turned off. Someone follow so we know that it's working. <laughs> <laughs> Anna Petty, he's 100 bits. Thank you so much, Anna. And yeah, someone someone do me a favor and follow <laughs> and see if that's working now. Sorry about that, guys. It might take a bit, but it should be showing up. Because I thought it used to be a visible part of my OBS screen too. Like, yeah. I hope that doesn't need to be like restarted because that would be a pain in the ass. It shouldn't need to. Can you do me a favor and just like help? <laughs> yeah. Just, just make it work. I'm just chilling. Thanks, Jared. Everybody say hey to Jared and thank you for being my IT guy. Let me try a thing real quick. I do think that this deeper cut line that I just made is helping me um, get a better bevel because this other side that I just did went way better than my first attempt on the other side. So I think it I just made too shallow of a cut and then as I was trying to move my beveling tool through the cut it wasn't um, staying aligned because it wasn't deep enough to hold it in place. So there's something to look out for if you're going to be um, yeah, if you're going to be getting it leather toy. Let's see. I've got Umbra Tonight, Scarlet Letter, Quicksilver, and Hair Schaefer all following. So thank you guys so much. But for some reason, it's still not popping up, which is annoying. So we're going to keep working on that. Sorry, guys. But thank you for following, all of you. Uh, assuming direct control. Jared is assuming direct control of my stream. Sorry that I'm like also kind of covering up what I'm working on, or totally working, covering up what I'm working on. Sorry, Jared. Sweet Zelda 2 remix. Tell it to DJ Cutman. So I am just picking up my texturizing stamp and once more going back. 
Oh, and see, I hit the edge. There we go. And just texturizing the whole interior area. And that will create some more contrast um, between this and the outside border. You got it back for sure? Yep. Now, before it was still visible for me up here in this box, like there was a, an event list. Okay. Um, that had like, you know, the last couple of follows. I think that was the only information that was there. I think something's just screwy with uh, Streamlabs right now. So I basically had to reset it. Well, I'm just concerned that things are becoming like unselected like the way that I had an issue with the camera. Um, oh no. I just put a dent in this leather with my tiny anvil, which was entirely my fault. It's fine, It's that's really minor. And guys, battle damage, eh? No, that's just gonna happen. Things are gonna get some small impressions. Okay, there we go. It's coming back up now. There it is. Yeah, that okay. just it just popped up. Yeah, there's something weird with Streamlabs, so I just had to put the CLR browser back in, so you're good. Yay! Awesome. Thank you, Jared. No Thanks for fixing all of my problems. That's what I do. I love you. I love you too. Alright, we're back. Let me check in on what I've been missing. Noir Boy says Jared has cute hands. Oh, absolutely he does. Okay, Asa, thank you for answering questions. Yeah, the water is for making the impressions, um, making the, well, the leather ma malleable. I cannot talk today. Um, as I apply water, the leather takes on, or becomes um, able to hold impressions. And so this was dry when I, when I accidentally like scraped, scraped it with my anvil and then created an unintentional impression. I just put some water on it and kind of rubbed the area, trying to like work out this little dent and it sort of worked. Like it's still barely, barely visible, but it's not a problem. Um, and like I said, it's gonna get some normal wear and tear as I'm wearing it, so I'm not worried about it. And that is what my sponge is for, and that is what my little leather, my little water cup is for, is applying directly to the spot that I'm gonna use, and you can see that it darkens, and the leather soaks up this water, and that is what makes these impressions hold. So. Here I have a cut, and um, I've made these swivel knife cuts that are like scoring the surface, and now the beveling tool is doing the job of compressing leather on one side of this cut only, so that the opposite side looks like a raised edge, but really it's at the same level as all of the leather was when it started. Hey, Mira's here. She says, just popping by to say hi before she starts streaming. Wish I could watch you for, aw, that's so nice. Uh, Mira Scarlet is also a, um, a friend of mine and another Twitch streamer and cosplayer, so check her out if you like my streams. Uh, she does some really fun crafting streams too. Oh, thank you, Char, for the positive review on my print quality. Uh, thank you for getting a, a print from my store. And yeah. I have been enjoying having those prints available now, and uh, they've never been available online before, so that's a new thing for me. But thanks for getting one, Char. 
Now the tiny anvil is supposed to be holding this in place, but it's still moving around a little bit. I think I need a heavier tiny anvil. nicely actually. So I had to use a regular pen when I was marking these out because I didn't want the line to be invisible on, on camera, um, but my leather pen, I was unable to replace it. Or So far I have been in, unable to replace it because the store where I get them from just doesn't have them. Um, so I'm a little self-conscious about how messy it looks because of the pen lines, but the pen lines will be completely covered by the paint so it won't matter in the end. Uh, it's just part of the work in press process pictures, I guess. Nice. These lines are going very well. that one a little bit too. Now my camera doesn't autofocus, but at least it's a little bit closer and you can get that detail. Oh, thanks kitten. And thank you so much for always being here um, and modding and being so great at that. I really appreciate that. Oh, that's right. Um, so there's a poll going, um, for those of you who might have just joined us, there's a poll going for what the next stream is going to be. Because I've been doing a lot of leather work streams and um, made a lot of really good progress on the leather armor parts of this costume. But I do need to move on at some point soon to doing the dress itself. So my options that are currently on the table are either to do the greaves, which is all the leg armor, or to move on to patterning and sewing the dress. And so if you have not already voted, there is a link in the poll, I'm sorry, there's a poll link in the chat that Kitten has so graciously put together. Um, and you can go in, express your opinion there on what is gonna happen next. But um, rest assured that both things will happen. Um, it's just a matter of what order I go in. Also, I've pretty much resigned myself to not, I'm not going to try to worry about finishing this for Fanime. Um, I kind of have an unhealthy pattern of trying really hard to finish something for a deadline and then having that um, crunch time, like really throwing off all of my work habits in an, a not healthy way. And I want to avoid that. And so I don't want to put myself in a position where um, I'm upset that I didn't finish for Fanime, or that I do finish for Fanime, but that it totally destroys my ability to just like operate normally um, afterward. And so I, I want to avoid that, and I think that it's a much better choice for me, uh, for my mental health and just for my like crafting habits, to just keep up my pattern of working on stream when I can, and um, you know continuing to work at a steady pace rather than forcing myself to rush out the rest of the costume and then both being unhappy with it and then being unhappy with myself in general because I worked that hard in such a short amount of time. Um, so I have made the executive decision to not worry about it and just work on my costume at the pace that it comes together. Although I would like to step up the pace a little bit. So some of both. <laughs> but not, a, not an unhealthy amount of stress is the plan. They say that sewing is still winning by a landslide slide. Well, that's good to hear. I'm glad that you know people are interested in that too. I didn't want to introduce a new thing that wasn't going to be as interesting to watch. So, cool. Oh, Katie is still recovering from surgery. I'm sorry to hear that you you know, are not feeling very energetic, but just be kind to yourself and give yourself time to recover and don't stress out about it. Um, 
So yeah, that's that's tough. You said that you don't have, you can't wait for it to come back. Are you working under a deadline? Let us know what's going on if you want to share. But uh, yeah, sorry about that. I hope you're feeling better soon. Okay, Bloody Lollipops is saying that they just learned a little bit about sewing, so it'd be cool to see a sewing stream. Yeah, um, I ordered another camera mount. So it's like, the way that this overhead camera, Super Danil, Super Danil maybe? Thank you so much for the follow. Um, the overhead camera that I have set up right here is on this like clamp. It's hanging from the ceiling. It's on a clamp that has like a little gooseneck or whatever. And you can um, just reposition it however you want. I ordered another one of those that's longer that's going to help me um, do a little bit more repositioning with the camera. So that will enable us to see like more of the table or from a different angle maybe. And um, make the sewing streams a little bit more dynamic, I hope, for to see exactly what's going on. Hi, the dragon hat. D hat hype. Welcome to our chat. Uh, let's see. PD McGuire says, I think it's great that you advocate for your health. Not a lot of people do that. I know I haven't in the past. Thanks for being a great role model. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, I know that there's like this trend of being a quote starving artist and like working yourself to the bone. And it, it's like, it's almost for a lot of people treated as like bragging rights that you like worked X amount of hours in X amount of time and that you've just like stretched yourself to the max. And you know, while it can be occasionally necessary and impressive to do that and pull it off well, that's not something that like if you're really planning well and um, you know, taking care of your shit, then ideally you won't be in that situation. So I think that I think that it's romanticized a lot to be constantly like at the end of your rope, and um, in real life that is it's not healthy and it's not good for you to push yourself that hard. And in the past I've struggled with that and I've I've done it wrong and I've um, pushed myself too hard and ended up having like literal breakdowns at a con or right before a con because I'm just so exhausted that I can't do it anymore. And um, there's nothing fun or romantic about that. It's, it really sucks to be in that position and just feeling awful about what you've done and you know what you're supposed to be doing for fun. So I've decided to take a step back um, and I want to stay really productive and I'm obviously doing these streams and it's a regular thing, but I don't want it to be about um, just like killing myself to get things done because that's not... It's not fun, it's not good for you. Oh, okay, Katie's saying that she's not under any deadline, luckily, she just really likes to do creative stuff. That's good. And find it hard to not be working. But thank you, Heidi, it always helps to be told to take it easy. I had a really hard time with it. This is, all of, all of what I'm saying right now is like a change of heart that I've had over the past few months because I've been going to therapy and talking to a therapist. And that's one of the things that she, um, really impressed upon me is that um, I need to be kind to myself and take leisure time for myself and schedule leisure time and there's so much pressure as you know being an artist there's so much pressure to constantly be putting out new content and be putting out new art and, and making more stuff and productivity is wonderful and you know should be celebrated but at the same time I think there's not enough of a focus on taking care of ourselves so yeah, that's something that I'm learning and uh, improving on for myself. And yeah, that's where we're at on our project. And I hope that you guys also can take that uh, advice to heart and do the things that you love in a way that, you know, make sure you still love it over time. there on 
on the last of his beveling. Oh, I'm like working way down in the corner too. I'm gonna move this out. <laughs> I have a bad habit of doing that and just only working like right in front of me. Let's see what people are saying. People talking about um, other like bad experiences they've had working on like crunch time, going to the doctor, having a panic attack. Yeah, I've experienced that stuff too. Like I've, I've absolutely had panic attacks or like just straight up breakdowns at a con. And um, you know, that's really rough on your body. It's rough on your partner or whoever is with you if you, I, you know, hopefully have someone with you. Oh, Mint Plosion. Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. She says, great advice. I feel you. That's why I stopped doing commissions last time. I Because last time I fainted. That's intense. Um, and yeah, I don't blame you. I don't do commissions too because of the stress. Okay, almost there. Working my way kind of over the same area just to smooth it out a little bit. My pen lines got a little bit messy on this one, unfortunately, so I don't know how clean this looks to you guys if you can even see the detail, but next time I'll get my I'll get my leather pen back and then I'll have to deal with these gross lines. Um so on a related note to talking about my work schedule and all of that, I started looking into what it will take to be a partner on Twitch since um, I've been really enjoying this and it seems like we've got you know a good thing going with new people joining us all the time and kind of a sense of community starting to appear, which makes me so happy. Um, so in light of all of that, I started looking into being a Twitch partner and one thing that I need to do is I need to add a third weekly stream. And um, so for my schedule, the best time to do that would be either on Thursdays or Fridays. Uh, but I also want to be open to feedback from you guys on what, what time, um, I guess, the most people can make it at or whatever. But that is something I'm going to be doing starting this coming week is that there's going to, I'm going to update my stream schedule to three times a week instead of just twice a week. So, um... Wednesdays and Saturdays streams will remain the same, but there will be either a Thursday or a Friday stream um, in the mix as well. And then I'll apply for partnership and then see if we can get our emotes and get some, some, some cool stuff like that. <clears throat> Overlord Dragonwolf, thank you for following. I'm glad that we have our notifications back up and that everything's working as it should be. All right, so I've just kind of applied this same pattern all over, and that one is good to go. Now I need to do the beveling on this guy here, and that is the last of this particular section, and we can wet mold after that. Breath of Hair says, hey Heidi, nice to see you, hello. People are saying Friday um, would be good. I mean, I haven't yet decided for myself what, because I think that um, either day could work. The only thing is that when I'm at a convention, I almost always leave on Thursdays, like leave my house to go to the con on Thursdays. So on convention weekends, it would be missing a stream. Unless I stream from the con, which that could happen, right? That'd be cool. Yeah, I've seen some other cosplayers that are like live streaming from their phones during conventions and just walking around and showing off what's going on. Um, 
So I think I'm gonna do that too in the future. Overlord, Dragon Wolf, thanks for the follow. From it showed that they came because of their sister, Quicksilver. Hello, and hello, Quicksilver. <laughs> okay, Kitten is still posting the link to that poll, but um, I haven't checked the results, but it sounds like people want to do sewing. Alright, sounds like sewing is going to be the winner either way. Well, that's fine. Um, like I said, both will happen and we've done plenty of leather work already, so it's going to be unsurprising that people want to see something else. Um, so here's what I'll do. I've already ordered all of my fabrics, so if they haven't already come in, they are arriving. Um, I have the leather for the garment at the outer shell is is all um white plunge leather and i have that i have the silk that's going to be the lining i have um well two different lining colors the red and the purple i've got both of those i have some coutil that's going to be the foundation layer basically um in order to make this strapless garment stay on me really really well it's going to have a foundation layer which is like an unseen layer beneath the like beneath the, the exterior of the dress that is going to be um, boned and so it'll have it'll be providing some structure. Not a lot of boning. It's not going to be like a corset or anything, but it's going to be um, slightly structured. Similarly to the way that I did Zelda's outfit and then that will, you know, I'll have videos and stuff on that whole process. And... So I need to do some pattern making for that, and I'm going to adapt some um, existing patterns that I have as well. The skirt and the gloves, I, I think I have some commercial patterns that are going to work for that. They've been coming out with a lot more cosplay specific patterns over the last couple of years. Um, so I know I have like a really basic skirt pattern, but I'm, I also have like glove patterns. Okami girl, thank you for the follow. Uh, patterns for gloves and things of that nature, thigh highs, etc. And so I want to do a stream that's just entirely about how to use commercial patterns and kind of walking through that whole process because I think that that's a question that a lot of new um, new sewers have, and that would be uh, a fairly quick project too because um, those are simple garments. So I think that would be a good opportunity to teach about um, what to expect from a commercial pattern and how to read it and how to go about using it, what to do. Um, that's something I want to do to dedicate a stream specifically to that concept. Oh, Petey McGuire is heading out. Sorry, I missed you. They might have already left, but thanks for being here and thanks for contributing to the conversation. We'll see you later. Andy Hannah Jones has a really good point, saying that if streaming on both Friday and Saturday would put a damper on my social, my weekend social life, then Thursday would be better. I think I agree with that. I think that I'm um, gonna pick. Thursday, um, maybe Thursday afternoon, because that way I would be, um, 
coming in from my, my previous Wednesday night stream and then I could just resume immediately working on whatever I was working on. And so then I would be doing like two streams, not quite back to back, but pretty close. So I think that's most likely gonna be my pick. Um, Thursday afternoon, if not like as early as a Saturday stream starts, then um, we'll see. I'll have, to, I'll have to set up a time, but I think that's what I'm gonna do. All right, cool. Thank you guys for helping me make those decisions. So now we have, um, oh, that's when Holly streams is when Becca says, okay, well, I don't wanna, I know that Holly and I have a lot of overlap as far as people watching us. <laughs> I'll double check exactly what time Holly's streaming and see if I can um, not be a direct conflict. Maybe if there's a little bit of overlap, then that'll, that'll happen, but I'll, I'll take a look at that. Thanks for the heads up. So yes, Thursday streams are most likely gonna become a thing, if not Thursday, then, then Friday. And uh, sewing streams will be up next, um, either either the commercial patterns one, or we'll get started on making a custom pattern. One of the one of the two, depending on how quickly my black fabric comes in. That's the yeah. one that hasn't arrived. Okay, um, so what I need to move on now is. Let me double check that I've got everything here. Oh, I did not bevel this edge on two of them. Okay, so let me do that really quickly, actually, before I move on. Then I need to go grab a water um, bowl to do our wet molding, but I forgot about this particular spot. I overlooked it a little bit. Yeah, I like streaming with Holly. Uh, Anna's suggesting that I um, stream with Holly again. Yeah, I would love to. I don't need this, what am I doing? <laughs> I would love to stream with Holly again if she has some time. Um, but you know, we've got our own projects underway most of the time. So that might be more of a specialized event. But I would like to invite more of my friends in general. If not Holly, then, uh, you know, I know a number of cosplayers here in the LA area. Um, so I was thinking about whenever my friends are available, I might invite some guest streamers to join me and then um, you guys can meet someone new and get the benefit of whatever their experience is. And yeah, stream overlap is unavoidable, you know, sometimes you have to choose or you get to multi-stream if you can multitask that much. But uh... It's just a part of it. So I'm just beveling um, this little line that is kind of completing the circle visually. Just to create this like multi-leveled effect. And this particular spot does not need to be texturized. Um, because I decided that it doesn't, because it's not the red area. I want some, some texture variation there. Okay, um, that does it for those two little last spots. I'm just gonna make some room. So let me go get my water bowl and fill that up and then I'll be right back and we will do our wet molding and uh, move on from there. I still don't have my BRB sign uploaded. I'm so sorry guys, I'll do that better. Oh, Travelsome isn't here to yell at me. I'm sorry Travelsome. <laughs> Thank you for making that image. <laughs>
I'm back. I'm back with my giant bowl of water. And black licorice flaving just followed. Uh, sorry I was walking away, other notification popped up, but thank you for the follow. And you guys are commenting on my backyard now that you can actually see it <laughs> when it's during the day. Well, I'm glad that my backyard is its own BRB screen. Okay, so this is just a big bowl of water, as most of you have all seen before. And if you're just joining us, this is how it works. Um, similarly to how I was applying leather, uh, water to the leather to make these um, textures, I am also going to be applying water to it to make it um, take on a new shape. So this needs to be curved. And I'm gonna be bending in the direction of the curve and just Letting it get really wet. Now this is probably too much water. Maybe I should do this more quickly. Um, but compare this one now. I'll set this down right here. Move things over a little bit. Compare this one to how easily that just bent into a new shape. To this one, which, yeah, I can bend it, but it's still fighting me. If I were to try to set it down, it would just pop back open. So that's how quickly and how effectively um, leather becomes malleable under water. So I don't want to move ahead too quickly. This is also just room temperature water. Um, I know that a lot of leather workers use hot water to mold because then you get some hardening properties as well. So like um, as the leather cools, it will become tougher if you're using hot water. I'm not doing that today because, well, number one, I need these pieces to stay really flexible. And number two, um, I'm making I'm making cosplay armor that is decorative and not uh, something that is going to be like a part of a LARP that needs to be actually protecting me. So a different process for a different outcome, um, depending on my needs. <laughs> uh, Turk in Turk I don't know how to say your name. I'm sorry. Turkanye, maybe, says, honestly, this is magic. Sorry, I just spent so long mispronouncing your name. <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's really neat to see it um, kind of transform. And now we will do the next one. You can use spray bottles, you can use sponges. You don't have to, like, dump it and soak it like I'm doing here. Oh, and this just... I just want all of my leather to change colors so that I know it got super wet. Um, but this is my preference for what I'm doing right now. And actually, I did. I kind of folded this one in half, but I think that what I need to actually do is fold it on um, the V point as the center point. So like the arms are slightly different lengths. And I knew that when I was patterning it. And the reason why is that it stretches, like it's mounted a little bit farther or closer to the center of my back, whereas the, the front part is um, more on the side. So that was that was abstract. I don't know if that was if you followed that. But basically, um, on the front it attaches here. On the back, it attaches closer to the center of my back, and so that's why these are like different lengths. Um, so right now I've got it set up to where these two center points are touching, just so that I can kind of verify that this is vaguely symmetrical. I'm gonna get it even farther under the center point here. I don't need this bowl at all anymore. All right. I'm looking forward to adjusting my camera setup soon. <laughs> I need to be able to make some more changes. But uh, here we go. Um, so that's why these sides are sticking out farther, but this is the center point of the V, the deepest part of the V, the deep V. Uh, and so that is the actual line that needs to be like um, the center part of the curve. And now I have it set up like so. And so these, um, I'm just gonna let them sit. Like they don't need to be molded over anything in particular because I'm not trying to get them um, to take on some sort of crazy new shape. They just need to, to chill in this position. And it looks like they're not gonna sag too much. I was worried about that at first when I realized how, um, just how malleable they were under the water. Um, 
But as long as they don't get like distorted or start like folding over or uh, something like that, um, then this is perfect for my purposes. And I will just let them set aside. Set them aside. Everybody say hello to our favorite friend, Miss Titties, uh, who is modeling our breastplate. Let's see. What do I, what do I, let me catch up on my comments here. Uh, Hayes Char is asking, in the past, did people really use leather to make armor sometimes? Yes, and in fact, they still do it in the present, if you're a part of certain costuming communities, of course. Um, but a lot of people were really into, like, the Ren Faire, um, or LARPing, which is, like, um, live-action roleplay, where you're, like, actually reenacting battles or whatever, whatever, that can be a, a large, um, a large category there. But um, there is a community of people out there who are still making functional leather armor. So mine is not functional in that sense. It's decorative. I'm not um, putting in extra work to like harden these pieces or melt metal underneath them or anything like that. But um, yeah, mine is just decorative. Overlord Dragonwolf is saying that leather armor was rather popular at times, even as strong as metal armor in some cases. That is pretty amazing. And yeah, I have no doubt that that's true. Um, like I said, using heat can harden leather. I'm not doing it in my streams. It's not something that I have a ton of experience with, but I have done it in the past of like wet molding a piece and then putting it in the oven and allowing it to um, bake in the oven for a little while. And it comes out much harder and much more, um, unfortunately slight, slightly more brittle, but maybe that depends on, like you have to get the right amount of heat and then you'll end up with a, a better product. But yes. Um, you can make some very nice functioning leather armor. Pinkthorn says, in fact, even today some firefighter helmets are still made of treated leather. That is very interesting. I wonder if um, the leather is fire retardant or not. I mean, I figure it would have to be. Okay, cool. Hey, Char says her dad's helmet is leather. What, uh, what does your dad do? Is he a firefighter? Because that's pretty awesome. All right. So, let's see what time are we at. We're at 2.21. Um, it's not going to be a super long stream today because I have some plans with a friend after this. So that is, uh, She's moving away, so this is one of my last chances to hang out with her. And so I want to make sure that I have plenty of time for that. So I'm going to be streaming for uh, until at least 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. So that's 40 minutes from now. So we've got at least 40 more minutes of time to kill here on um, working on my next steps. And one thing that I want to do is... Um, add holes here so there's a strap that's connected here i want to um, add my holes for where the strap is going to connect it's going to have a chicago screw connection um, which are just little hand screws that you can tighten with your fingers or with a screwdriver obviously um, oh wow shara is saying that her dad is a firefighter and so is her sister and two of her brothers so you have a whole family of firefighters that's really awesome um, yeah. Uh, yeah, do you have any more? Do you have any plans of being a fire firefighter? Is Mary Echos is asking. That's really interesting. Got like the, the family business there. So I want to punch these holes before I move into paint. As I mentioned, um, it'll be helpful for winter painting because the way that I'm going to do the painting is, um, I'm going to paint outdoors, it's going to be off stream, um, but I'll show you guys later, which is why I want to talk through it a little bit. Um, I will paint the items and then have them hanging on a drying rack. So it'll have like, um, basically some little hooks can go through these holes and I don't have to, uh, and it'll just hang there and it'll be entirely suspended and not, um, I can paint it all sides at, at once. Um, so that's my plan, and that's why I want to add holes here. Yeah, I could hang it up like that, but I don't want to do that. <laughs> I would rather have more control with a tiny hole. Um, this piece does not have that. And in fact, I need to figure out exactly where this connection is going to hit. But I think I need to have my leather pieces be dry to do that. 
Um, I need to figure out exactly where to punch my other three holes here uh, that line up with this piece. But they need to be dry before I can do that. So, in the meantime, I'm just going to put Miss Titties away and hold on to the titty frame and um, start planning things out. strip of leather already cut, but, I, well, it wasn't leather, it was, um, I had a strip of foam, but I need to do it out of leather anyway. So, hmm, let me go see what I can dig up in my, my closet. If I have to bring out that whole hide, I will, but I'd rather just use some scrap if I can. So let me grab that. Mary Echos is asking, what are you connecting the two chest pieces with, or how are you connecting the frame to the chest piece? That's going to be stitched. There's going to be a line of stitching tucked discreetly right along uh, this innermost border and it'll be stitched all the way around. The reason why I haven't done it yet is because I want to paint them while, they're st while they are still separate and um, have, you know, not have to mask it off because this one is, this is going to be completely gold, a little bit of red, the in inner piece is going to be completely white. So we painted separately and then mounted onto the outside and then stitched together. Uh, Midplosion is asking, is there any way to accelerate the drying part or does it have to be just air dried? Uh, you can put it in the oven if you want to bake it, but like I said, that results in hardening. And for these particular pieces, I don't want them to, to harden because I want them to be really flexible and easy to, um, to move around in. So that's an option or you could, you could probably like put it under a dryer, but it does need to like very thoroughly dry out. Um, and so the best way is to just leave it alone for a while. Uh, Alright, so let me go over to my leather closet leather closet briefly and dig around in there and see what I have in the way of pre-cut straps or um, maybe drag a hide out here so I can cut some. Be right back. All right, I missed something. Kai Pon, Kai Pon Visp has followed. Thank you for following. Welcome to our leather crafting stream. Uh, I did find some straps. All right, I'm gonna move some things around a little bit. These guys are gonna go away so that they can just dry in peace. And I'll move them to the other side of the table. So I found some things um, in my drawer. These are older pieces of leather. You can tell because they're darker. I have another hide over here that's, or the ends of a hide that is older um, and, and darker colored because of that. I had some other straps, but I think these are too small. I think these are only an inch and a quarter. Um, and I will measure them to be sure when I find my ruler. My favorite ruler. I have several rulers, but where is my favorite one? Oh, it's over my my sewing machine. So I was using it last night. 
my drunken sewing uh, expeditions. Okay, yes, this is only an inch and a quarter, and I want an inch and a half, I believe. And this one is an inch and a half. Stan Roy four, thank you for the follow. Oh, and Tiffany Squirrel used five bits, thanks. Okay, what did I miss over here? Oh, hi, hi Kai Von Pit, Kai Pond Visp. I keep saying that wrong. Uh, They're heading to bed because they need to go to sleep, but they wanted to drop by. That makes me happy, nice to see you. All right. This has like a chunk cut out of it from um, previously being used on a different belt in this piece too, but they are an inch and a half, I believe, yes. So, um, I don't need very long straps. That might be fine. This one would be probably long enough. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to get a longer piece, but this one is gonna work. So at the very least I have that. Um, yeah, this is smaller. And this is a part of a belt that I had miscut. This is from um, when I was doing Luca. I, what did I do? Oh, I, I punched the holes like upside down, I think is what happened. Or this was, or it was too small for my purposes. Anyway, I have other straps. Basically, anytime I mess up, it just goes into the scrap bin and then I hold on to it for later, which is, um, you know, I'll inevitably find another use for it over time. Okay. So I've got my knife here and then a different ruler, which has a metal edge. And I will cut some straps. Hmm. I have a belt end punch that is this shape that I could use. I'm sorry, I could basically do it inverted. This is the inversion of the, the belt punch. Um, this is the scrap left over after I punched my belt a different time. Um, so I could use a belt punch to give this like a rounded edge, but I think it would make my uh, connection point too narrow. So I'm just gonna do a flat cut because it's gonna be hidden underneath the, like the pieces that it attached to, this will be the bottom layer. And so the, the pretty sides will be covering up the ends of this, but I don't have to worry about them. I'm just gonna cut both ends flat for now and then adjust the length by like putting it on. Um, which, Selica's armor is so gravity defying. Um, if you look at the way that it's connected to her dress, it has a strap going under the arm that connect the front and the back pieces together, but it doesn't have any over the shoulder support. Like there's a strap here, but there's not a strap here. Um, so it's sort of gravity defying in that sense. And the way that I'm gonna end up doing it, I think is to put Velcro on the inner side of this whole like boob section. And so that will mount onto the dress with Velcro. And the strap that's underneath is more or less decorative because it's certainly not supporting the chest piece or holding it on. So that's the approach I'm gonna take with it. Um, and then we'll see what the needs of the project are as I get, or like how heavy it is, what, it, how it, like whether it needs additional support once I get to the point where I'm reading it together. Uh, Mint Plushin says the pad at the bottom has a ruler. Yeah, my, uh, my, this is a nice ruler and so I'm, I'm lining it up with that, but I specifically wanted a uh, metal edge to, to slide the blade along because otherwise I'll end up cutting my stuff up or just like making a, a warble, a wobbly line. Um, yeah, a lot of these songs are Zelda remixes over Dragon. Overlord Dragonwolf is pointing out that I'm listening to a lot of Zelda remixes, but uh, I love I love Zelda remixes. They're good, and DJ Cutman has a lot of them. Um, let's see. Obsidance says no clear plastic straps. That's certainly an option, and if it comes to that, I will use them um, if it really needs the extra support. But I'd prefer not to because it is still visible even if they're clear plastic. Um, you know, I could Photoshop them out of photos if I really cared, but. Uh, for being in person and stuff, I like to I like to minimize any sort of um, like anything that's n that doesn't serve the design. So I'll do it if I have to, but not if I don't have to. Giraffe man, hello, welcome, and thank you for joining us here today. Okay, 
So moving some stuff aside, I now have just a, a blank strap here that I'm gonna use to gauge where this needs to be connected. And I just had another chunk of leather that dropped off behind me. Here's my other, other reference image. It's from the art book. I've showed this to you guys before, um, but this is like giving me a little bit more information on how and where these straps are connected. So this is gonna go between the front piece here and the back piece. It'll come to there. Well, this also needs to be wet molded, come to think of it. But I don't have to do that right now. <laughs> All right. Um, what did it, what did I decide? Okay, the straps are both underneath. Um, so there are going to be holes through both pieces for where they connect, but the strap itself is connecting underneath the main piece. All right, so this is how I'm gonna go about doing it. I'm going to mark the distance of the holes on my strap itself, and then use that, punch the holes in the strap, and then use that to um, copy the information to these pieces. And then we have to decide exactly where I wanna place them. I think three, three eighths of an inch from either side is good, and how far from the top. Probably also three and three eighths of an inch. Limparian, thank you for the follow. Welcome to our stream today. Um, let me also grab my Chicago screws because it's going to give me a visual on how close they can or should should or should not be together. These are the Chicago screws that I was talking about. And basically these are, um, they're similar to rivets in the style and how they look, but they, uh, they are installed differently. So got a bunch of them just kind of jumbled together in here. Pulling out a gold one. Oh, and a silver one just insisted on coming out too. Uh, pulling out a gold one. Oh, these are two different sizes, but whatever. The point is that this has like a screw post end and then a, like a cap. There's a, a screw head on one side. These can still be connected even though they're not the same length. And so you can just finger screw them in and then use a screwdriver to tighten up the connection. Um, these are really great for um, any sort of connections where it would be difficult to get the rivet set because a rivet requires um, the force of a mallet and some sort of like setting tool together. And there are a couple different ways to do that, but either way, um, you have to be able to maneuver that equipment around whatever the area is you're working on to set a rivet. So what I mean by that is like, um, I've used Chicago screws to attach armor to shoes before, because if you're trying to, it's, it's really difficult to maneuver the setting tools and like the little anvil you have to use to the interior of a shoe. There's not very much room and uh, you can avoid that by just using these Chicago screws and hand screwing it together. So I wanted to get these out um, partly to explain them and partly to be a visual indicator of where um, these pieces will be connected. Giraffeman13, thank you for the follow. Welcome to our chat today. So, I think they can actually stand to be closer together. But this is how large they are. And I'm just gonna position them directly on top of the little circle marks that I made. And I do think I want them to be slightly closer together. Well, maybe not, what do you guys think? Um, 
Hey, Rose with Flash, glad you could join us. Oh, and thank you so much, um, Justin. Rose with Flash is, uh, was so gracious to send me some additional reference images of Celica and just like emailed those to me, and I really appreciated that. So shout out to, to him, and thank you so much for um, contributing. It's Desala, thank you for following. Welcome to our leather crafting stream. And Limparian says that they've been lurking a little bit before. <laughs> I do the same thing. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, Anna Petty asking, um, can you just pick those up at any craft store? Uh, maybe. I got these from Tandy, and I know that Home Depot sells them in various sizes. Um, Home Depot, I think, sells longer ones that have, you know, obviously... Well, I don't know. I guess it depends on what your your purpose is, but they are can be used for another a number of other materials besides leather, obviously. And yeah, try Home Depot or Tandy. That's where I get mine. All right, um, I think the distance is fine here, actually, now that I'm seeing them together and considering how it will look on this guy, too. Yeah, that's gonna be fine. Okay, so I'm gonna go for it. And to do that, I'm just going to use my little rotary hole punch. So this has all the different size um, tips that are gonna punch holes of different sizes. I need to use the largest one to be able to shove a Chicago through, screw through it. So I'm just gonna dunk this in my water to make it nice and uh, easy to cut through, I hope. And then I like to make just a light impression bef and to like judge the positioning before I commit to punching the hole. Oh, and I did not get all the way through, but I'm gonna deal with that in just a second. Oh, there it goes, there goes my titty frame. Okay, that one went all the way through. This one is still connected on the back. I'm gonna just push it. I'm gonna use my X-Acto blade to just shave it off where it's connected. I need to sharpen my tools and then I won't have that problem, but this is what we're doing today. Pastel Galaxy says, that looks like a very scary can opener. Yeah, a little bit. It's not scary though, I insist. It is totally, completely non-scary. Okay, so this now is going to be a, almost like a stencil for where the holes need to be punched on the piece below. And I'm going to look at my reference image for this. Oh, you know, for these, um, for these actually, I said I'm gonna use Chicago screws what I'm actually going to do is use Chicago screws on one side and then use snaps on the other side. So I should not punch all of my holes the same size because the snaps are smaller and I think the snaps are going to be in back. Well that's fine, I can just replace the strap. So that way um, it's easy to get into, I don't have to fiddle with the screws to apply it, to put it on my own body, I can just snap it. But the front will be um, just the Chicago screws so it'll be like nice and um, simple looking. Okay, it looks like the placement of the rivets slash snaps slash Chicago screws, it does interrupt this pattern on the back. So what I'm gonna aim for is putting it directly on this second um, bar on the border. Elune, thank you for following. Welcome to our leather crafting stream today. All right, so I'm just gonna line this up with that second, um, that second border that I just described to you guys. The thing I'm gonna do this time is instead of using the pen, some water here. I'm gonna use this little 
it's not, this is a sculpting tool, not at all, but it's gonna work like a scratch all for me right now. And, um, instead of putting ink onto this piece, it is just like scratching up the surface a tiny bit uh, to designate the position. Oh, and my tool is like not holding up. I need to get an actual scratch all and just call it a day. All right, but now I have my positions marked. I'll do the same for the other side. It's about 2.44, so I'm gonna be wrapping up in about 15 minutes or so. Um, but that's fine. We're getting, we're getting to the end of the tasks that I had planned for today anyway. And then as per our, uh, poll results, the next stream will be a sewing stream and I'll post a little bit more information about that. Um, but that will be our Wednesday stream on Wednesday night. I will be sewing, um, starting some sort of patterning project. All right. Now these spots are now marked on the front. I'm sorry, on the on the back. I'm gonna do the same for the front. And I'm gonna check my reference one last time. There's the larger one, and yeah, it has totally two rivet-like um, little circles right on that spot where it is connected to the strap. So for me. I could do them in the center, but I think I want to do them again on the second border of just being slightly off, um, off the edge. Oh, Ash made it. <laughs> I'm glad to see that you're here, um, but you've only got 20 minutes. That's right. And then I'm going to be uh, wrapping up pretty soon. Cactus Wolf is also just arriving. Hey, Cactus Wolf, if you didn't notice, I made you a mod. Thank you so much for always um, contributing some nice and helpful advice to the chat. And I just wanted to appoint another mod to help Kitten out. So there you go. I hope that you don't mind. <laughs> Thank you for stopping by the stream so much. All right. I like the positioning on this too. Where did I put it? I put it like to where it's almost intersecting with that corner. It's a good visual reference. So that is where I'm going to move this slightly more towards the center. That is where my holes will be on this piece. Nice. <laughs> Yay. Let's see. That's right, let's make this a glorious last um, 15 minutes or so. I am right now marking hole positions for where the snaps are going to connect to the rest of it. And um, I also finished tooling and wet molding the shoulder pieces today. So before the end, I'll pull those back out and kind of show off all of the work we've done so far and uh, lay it all out together. And you guys can get a sense of what this costume is going to look like pretty soon. Uh, Super Nin, Super Miguch is asking, hello, what are you doing? I am making leather armor, <laughs> and maybe some people in the chat can fill you in on more details, but uh, we are working on this costume here to the right side of the screen. It's uh, Celica from Fire Emblem Echoes, which is a game that comes out next week, and this is a part of the breastplate that she's going to wear. Okay. Um, the size of this hole, is that good for this? Yes. So the hole... This size that I've currently got loaded up in here is the correct size for a Chicago screw. And I decided that the front part of this um, chest plate is going to be the Chicago screw. Did I make it? Oh yes, I made it. It feels so good. Yep, got it. Nailed it. Perfect holes. Mm. 
<laughs> That's right. Plus we have Nightbot. So now we've got Kitten, Ash, Cactus Wolf, Nightbot. I think we're, I think we're covered. But that way, uh, there's some there's some wiggle room there for people who can or cannot make it to various streams. All right, so now this part has holes, and these are going to be awesome for when I am hanging this um, during painting or while it is drying. Because I think I'm going to try to airbrush all of this stuff. I have an airbrush, not a very nice one, but uh, I have an airbrush. I'm going to try to put the paint on with that and see if it is a better um, way to streamline all of this. Okay. So as I mentioned, this is the correct hole size for Chicago screws, but snaps have a smaller shank, which is the little part that's sticking up in the middle. And uh, so I'm gonna grab the snaps and then make sure I'm using the right size hole before I put holes into my back piece. So one more tool to grab. So these are the smaller snaps. The ones that I have um, to do the design in the front are, these are line 24 snaps, which is a larger size. And these are line 20. Um, and you can see the size difference here. Well, you can see it here. <laughs> uh, so this is line 24 and line 20. Um, I'm almost out of the line 24. I need to put that on my shopping list for my next Tandy trip. But, um, the ones that I will use for the back will be the line 20. So this has a much smaller shank. Um, the shank is the, the part that's sticking up here. I'm going to mark them by just uh, impressing them into the wet lip. Oh, now I have the hiccups. It's the worst. That is a much smaller hole. <laughs> uh, Limparian is asking, how do I get the leather bits out of the hole punching thing? Mine is getting a bit crowded. Uh, it can be difficult because of the way that these are positioned. Mine unscrew, which I haven't, I don't usually take them all the way out, but they do unscrew. So, um, if he's talking about, or he or she, Limperian is talking about um, the, oh, and one just fell out, the little like plugs of leather that get cut out when it makes a hole, they start to jam up inside the, there we go. So I just like, they, they jam up inside the little cutting um, bit. So I just stab it from one side with probably not a pen. You can probably find a more sturdy tool to do that for you. But I generally don't have too much trouble with it. Um, if you're having a lot of trouble and you can't get the, the little leather plugs out and it's too packed in there, try getting it wet. Um, because again, leather is, is stretchy and malleable when it's wet, so um, you can probably squeeze them out of there when they're wet. <laughs> okay. So I am going to figure out which size hole I need by matching it up with a snap. And it looks like this is the correct one. So one thing to keep in mind is that you don't need, you need the, the hole needs to be large enough for the entire piece to sit inside of it, which is why I just push it into, literally into the bit um, to make sure that that hole is gonna be large enough. And it is. So this is our correct hole size. And now I'm just dropping these little leather plugs everywhere because they're just falling out in my tool now. Oh, that one didn't quite go all the way through. Maybe this next one will get it in one go. All right, this one went. I'm going to do my same method of just stabbing it through and severing the connection with a little X-Acto blade. Okay. 
This is such a good song. Which one is this? Let me look it up real quick. Penguin Zombie Apocalypse? Oh, this is by Kubi. Hmm, I wonder if this is a part of the playlist or if this is just an, a, um, one that accidentally, or not, uh, that automatically played a similar file. Hmm. Okay, I just turned that off so that way we won't get off my playlist because that could potentially end, result in copyright claims and I want to avoid that which is why I created a special playlist and I don't think that this song is a part of it. So that's unfortunate. Hopefully um, Twitch and or YouTube will not um, cut this out, but it might. Uh, and I love this song so much, it's kind of a bummer. But there we go. Got to play within the rules in order to keep everybody happy. Yep, this is not on my playlist, so I'm gonna have to stop that song, unfortunately, because um, I really like the song I just played, but it's not on my playlist, so it is therefore not um, not under the Creative Commons license uh, for creation. So that's a bummer, but I'm going to find another song that I really like instead, and then we'll end the stream that way by going back to our trusty playlist. This is really good adventure music. I like to put this on when I'm in my car driving around. Okay. So we have holes here now for this side. We have holes here. In fact, I can use my Chicago screws now to connect this. So I'm gonna put my tools away so I don't put things back in the wrong, um, wrong spot. Oh no, those are the same size too. Those are also a line 20. Alright, so be it. And I, of course I put my Chicago screws away because I wasn't thinking I was going to do this part. Uh, Ashley, metric did trigger that. So that's why I, um... Oh, he says, none of the... Metric songs got cut out of my shoe armor making video though. That's a bummer. Um, I was getting notifications. Well, first of all, um, using that music means I can't monetize any of my past streams on YouTube, which is not that big of a deal, but when you consider the fact that I'm gonna end up making hundreds of, uh, hundreds of streams over time, and the fact that you know people are watching them and that none of that can go to me as revenue is just kind of a bummer and unwise. Uh, as far as the use of my time. So um, I've decided to instead use music that I uh, have license to use that is not going to create that problem because um, otherwise it's just sort of a waste. And then in addition to that, I was getting some complaints from people in other countries that um, YouTube would it block the video in its entirety just because of one song that was playing. So like it was unavailable to watch in, I think, Canada or maybe some other certain countries and not just it wasn't specifically metric the band I don't think it was other musicians and other songs but they were just coming up because I had no control over what exactly was playing because it was Pandora so I abandoned that um, solely so that it would not create those types of um, issues where the, the video was being completely blocked from certain countries all right there we go that looks really nice doesn't it I just kind of use my fingers to tighten that up. When I'm doing it for real, I will use a, a screwdriver 
to make sure that it's um, completely connected where it needs to be. Oh, I know what we can do in our last few minutes too. Oh, it's only one minute <laughs> till three, but I, I can keep going for a little bit. Um, my last thing that I'm gonna do is wet mold this guy. I said that I needed to wet mold him over the back of something, which is gonna be this mannequin that I have to strip down really quickly. Set that aside for a moment. Bring my water bottle, my water bowl back in here. Yay, Evil Ted is here. I'm almost gonna be done with this stream, but I'm glad that you stopped by. And he says yes, supporting, supporting licensed music, which you know. You know, Twitch will let you play the song, and that's fine, and, you know, sometimes it's all you want if you're not trying to monetize anything, but I just feel much better operating within the licenses that I know that I can have, um, so that I don't have to deal with anybody else. Alright, so this has already taken on quite a bit of shape, just, like, forming over, and it doesn't, uh, like, this is, I'm just gonna let it hang out here, it doesn't need to be, like, um, pressed too much, but I do want it to, t to take on the curve of my back because the, oh, I need to take my ring off, the leather was completely flat before and kind of curling up at the edges. I want the opposite. And I want this to not have a pin in it because it's capturing the shape of that pin head. All right, and that will do it. And actually what I can do is put some pins um, through the holes that I just punched, just to make sure it doesn't slide around or slide off um, and kind of get into a position that I don't like. So that's the benefit of using um, a softer kind of mannequin. So I'm gonna just slide these pins in at an angle so that they are uh, applying some pressure down a little bit. How am I doing lighting that up? Oh, I can use my camera. I don't have to stand and look over. All right, and that does it. So this is gonna dry out pretty quickly, probably. I'm just pressing it a little bit into the mannequin itself so that it kind of has a little bit of a dome shape uh, and matches the curve of my back. So it doesn't need too much, just a little. I'll set this aside and come back to it tomorrow and it should be in the right shape. So for the last hurrah on our stream, here is my uh, Miss Titties is back. She's modeling our breastplate once again. Now with more strap. And I'll just tuck this underneath. And then um, the length, the straps I'm gonna cut to length at the end so that they um, fit me perfectly. And then I'll have, to, I'll have to test fit that once the dress itself is on so I know exactly how much space it's adding. And yeah, it's, just, it's not gonna wanna sit properly with the screws on it, but so be it. You guys know what it looks like. Um, and then finally, our shoulder pieces. I'll bring these back in here for the last look, which is for these guys to be tucked under at the bottom and then attached to the front of the breastplate, like wings almost, like so. And there it is. That is what the costume is gonna look like. How exciting is this to see it all together when we built this entirely on stream together? If you've been watching these regularly, you have seen every part of the creation of every single piece of this. So that's pretty neat, right? Yeah, Cactus Wolf has good answers. Thank you for answering questions that are coming up here.
Um, Patty GD asked, hi Heidi, what is the tape that you use for your mannequin? That is paper tape. It is um, also sometimes called gummed paper tape or gummed craft tape, but it's basically a tape that's made out of a paper-like material or some type of paper um, that only becomes tacky when it's uh, when water is applied to it. So it's gummed in a way that is, um, the gum is only activated by water. So that's what makes it so useful for um, that kind of mannequin is because I can put pins in my mannequin and they are not sticky because the mannequin is not sticky. And any other type of tape would remain sticky, like a uh, masking tape or duct tape especially stays really, really sticky and then as you try to put pins into the mannequin, they come out all gunky and it is a pain in the ass, so. That's something to keep in mind if you want to make your own. Titty wings, if you may, says sleep sheepy. Sleep sheepy. Awesome. All right, cool. Well, this is just about it for today. It's 3.05 where I am and I have to go uh, meet with my friend, otherwise I would keep going. But my next stream is going to be on Wednesday and Wednesday will be a sewing stream, so tune in for that. Um, armor making will resume at some point after, I'm, uh, after I've made some, some progress on the, uh, the sewing aspects of this costume. So just keep in touch on social media if you wanna know more or what to expect from future streams. And give a follow if you're interested in seeing the rest of this uh, costume come together. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate uh, people showing up for the stream and chatting with me. It really makes the time pass so quickly and um, make sure that I have a good time while I'm working. So thank you guys so much. I will see you guys next time. And uh, thank you for joining me. Have a great rest of your Saturday. Overlord Dragonwolf says, farewell leather warrior. I don't think I've ever been called a leather warrior before and that warms my heart. It makes me so happy. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a nice weekend, everybody.